Hey, movie buffs, ever heard of a film that adds a funky twist to the classic Wizard of Oz tale? Well, in 1978, Sidney Lumet directed an urban adaptation called The Wiz, bringing a soulful vibe to the yellow brick road. Now, here's the hook buckle up because we've got a load of funny, shocking, and sad facts about this one, so keep those eyes glued to the screen. Ever wondered if there's a specific scene that stuck with you long after the credits rolled? Or maybe you pondered why this movie remains a timeless symbol in the film industry? Drop your thoughts below, we're all ears. Before you go, we're curious what's your most memorable moment or personal experience related to this cinematic gem? Share your stories and let's keep the conversation alive in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And there you have it, a journey down the streets of the whiz without the frills. Stay tuned for more movie tidbits and remember to share your own tales with us. Happy watching. The 1978 film, The Wiz, has received mixed reviews with notable criticisms across various aspects. Despite the anticipation stemming from a love for disco, soul, R&B, and a genuine appreciation for the era, the film falls short of expectations. One prominent critique revolves around Diana Ross's portrayal of Dorothy. Many have pointed out her perceived mismatch for the role, both vocally and visually. The film's musical renditions and sound quality have also faced scrutiny, with the overall consensus being that the performances failed to capture the potential of the songs. Lena Horne's performance, often singled out as fantastic, is seen by some as a misfit in the overall context. Her departure from her usual nuanced jazz style to a low-down gospel approach is cited as a less-than-seamless fit. The film's interpretation of Michael Jackson's character is criticized for obscuring the beloved figure beneath layers of makeup and a lack of focus in certain scenes. Narrative inconsistencies and peculiar scenes contribute to the film's perplexity. The portrayal of Dorothy's attachment to Toto fluctuates and the subway sequence and the emergence of saber-toothed garbage cans raise questions about the creative choices. The depiction of cultural issues affecting African Americans in the 70s is, is deemed inconsistent with the Emerald City fashion scene appearing disconnected from the thematic tableau. The absence of the iconic and you were there scene at the end and the size of some sets resembling actual New York City locations add to the film's uniqueness. While it may not be deemed a total waste of time, The Wiz stands out as a peculiar cinematic experience that leaves viewers with a mix of surprise and curiosity. For those intrigued by unconventional films, The Wiz offers an oddity worth exploring. Check out a website dedicated to discussions on unconventional movies at www.cinemabern.com. In 1978, Sidney Lumet directed a distinctive urban adaptation of the classic Wizard of Oz tale aptly titled The Wiz. Let's explore some interesting aspects surrounding the film without unnecessary details. Firstly, it's worth noting that Diana Ross, who took on the role of Dorothy, joined the Rhythm and Blues Foundation as a member of the Supremes on February 21, 23. Fast forward to February 8, 2021, after Mary Wilson's passing, Ross remains the sole surviving original member of the Supremes. Looking back to January 1965, Music Business Magazine named the Supremes the one female soul artist, highlighting their significant influence on the music scene. Now, turning our attention back to The Wiz, the movie has received mixed reviews over the years. Critics, driven by a love for disco, soul, and R&B, expressed anticipation, but felt the film fell short of expectations. One major critique revolves around Ross's portrayal of Dorothy, with some questioning her suitability for the role, both vocally and visually. The film's musical renditions and sound quality faced scrutiny, as many believed the performances did not fully capture the potential of the songs. Lena Horne's performance, often praised, raised eyebrows due to her departure from her usual nuanced jazz style to a low-down gospel approach. Michael Jackson's character interpretation also received criticism for obscuring the beloved figure beneath layers of makeup and a lack of focus in certain scenes. Narrative inconsistencies and peculiar scenes contribute to the movie's perplexity, such as Dorothy's fluctuating attachment to Toto and the appearance of saber-toothed garbage cans in unexpected places. The depiction of cultural issues affecting African Americans in the 70s was seen as inconsistent, with the Emerald City fashion scene appearing disconnected from the thematic tableau. Notably, the absence of the and you were there scene at the end, and the size of some sets resembling actual New York City locations added to the film's uniqueness. 
In conclusion, while The Wiz may not be a total waste of time, it stands out as a peculiar cinematic experience, leaving viewers with a mix of surprise and curiosity. For those intrigued by unconventional films, it offers an oddity worth exploring. Sidney Lumet's 1978 urban adaptation of The Wizard of Oz tale, titled The Wiz, brings a unique twist to the classic narrative. In an interesting casting tidbit, Jimmy J.J. Walker was initially considered for the role of the Scarecrow, but turned it down. The part eventually went to Michael Jackson, adding a distinct flavor to the film. The Supremes, a famous musical group, play a significant role in The Wiz. Notably, Diana Ross, who portrayed Dorothy, became a member of the Supremes on February 21, 2003. As of February 8, 2021, she stands as the sole surviving original member after the passing of Mary Wilson. Reflecting on January 1965, the Supremes earned the title of the number one female soul artist according to Music Business Magazine, underscoring their influence on the music scene. Examining the film's reception, it garnered mixed reviews over the years. Despite expectations rooted in a love for disco, soul, and R&B, the movie fell short in some aspects. Diana Ross's portrayal of Dorothy faced scrutiny, with questions raised about her suitability for the role, both vocally and visually. The musical renditions and sound quality also came under the spotlight, criticized for not fully realizing the potential of the songs. Lena Horne's performance, usually praised, took an unexpected turn as she departed from her nuanced jazz style to embrace a low-down gospel approach. Michael Jackson's character interpretation faced criticism for obscuring the beloved figure beneath layers of makeup, adding a layer of complexity to certain scenes. Narrative inconsistencies and peculiar scenes contribute to the film's perplexity. Dorothy's fluctuating attachment to Toto and the unexpected appearance of saber-toothed garbage cans raise eyebrows. The depiction of cultural issues affecting African Americans in the 70s is seen as inconsistent, with the Emerald City fashion scene appearing disconnected from the thematic tableau. Notably, the absence of the and you were there scene at the end, coupled with the peculiar size of some sets resembling actual New York City locations, adds to its uniqueness. While it may not be deemed a total waste of time, the movie stands out as a peculiar cinematic experience, leaving viewers with a mix of surprise and curiosity. For those intrigued by unconventional films, it offers an oddity worth exploring. Sidney Lumet faced challenges during the filming of the Wiz's Emerald City sequence at the World Trade Center Plaza. Wind and scheduling issues forced a premature end, and a lighting error led to a shortened red sequence. The Port Authority's refusal to grant extra time for reshoots left him with no chance to fix mistakes. This incident offers a glimpse into the practical hurdles of movie making. In 1976, Lumet attended the now-defunct California Preparatory High School in Encino. He was voted most creative, shyest, and best dressed in the yearbook, but ironically missed out on the title of most likely to succeed. This snippet from his past sheds light on the dynamics of high school recognition and the unexpected trajectories individuals take. Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson's collaboration soured when half the songs from Jackson's 1987 album Be Ad got axed. In a 26 interview with the Daily Telegraph, Jones confessed to years of silence between them. This rift provides a glimpse into the world of artistic partnerships and the challenges of creative disagreements. These backstage anecdotes offer a deeper understanding of the challenges and dynamics behind The Wiz's creation. Filming constraints, high school quirks, and artistic conflicts add layers to the narrative, enriching our appreciation of the urban adaptation. What unfolded behind the scenes truly influences how we perceive the peculiar cinematic experience that is The Wiz.